This is my collection of tiny lenses. They aren't the most reliable or useful tools, but I like them. Something about the size, the build quality of the older models, the oddity of them. There's a magic to it. I usually only use them when shooting purely for fun, but in this video, every shot is from a C-mount lens. They each have their own quirks, such as a small image circle leading to these large vignette marks, almost a circular image. It's kind of a lottery purchasing these. You never know if it's going to be a beautiful image or a stinker. But with what other kind of lens can you carry a whole kit of seven in one handful? To use these lenses on a modern mirrorless camera, all you need is a simple adapter. These can be found for about 10 bucks online. Any mirrorless mount will work. I'll be using Sony E-mount. Now, when searching for these lenses, there are some kinds to avoid. There are mounts that look similar with a different flange distance, which means the lens needs to be closer to the sensor to focus correctly. I'll dive into more details on that in a second, but for now I want to start showing off some of these lenses and their unique attributes. This video will be a collection of clips and short reviews as I stash these lenses in my pocket and set out for a day of shooting in Indianapolis. The first lens I want to talk about is this cinema lens for 16mm film cameras from 1955. The Elgeet 12mm f1.2 is definitely my favorite out of the bunch. It's a little bigger than the other tiny lenses, but that makes it a little easier to focus, nicer build quality. This thing is heavy as hell. It's a 12mm focal length, which is about as wide as you can find for these 16mm film camera cinema lenses. You can get like 8mm and 10mm on ones with smaller image circles, but at the end of the day, after you crop in, this one is about as wide as you can get. This one definitely has some characteristics of a vintage lens, a little bloom, a little glowy, dreamy look to it, but it's still very sharp all the way to the edges. The image circle doesn't fully cover APS-C, but with Sony Clear Image Zoom, you can crop in a little bit, not lose any quality, and get a full image out of it. I got a Baja Blast with tequila. What did you get? Uh, strawberry with vodka. Since these lenses are so small, they can be a little finicky to pull focus on, and the Elgeet being a bit bulkier makes that a touch easier. If you were adapting it to full frame, the small image circle would be a bigger issue, but for APS-C I don't mind it much. This is my favorite of my collection to use, but I also paid the most for it. It's a somewhat rare lens that I found for about 150 bucks, but all the others on the list I paid at most $20-$30 for. My next lens actually has a pretty similar looking image, and you can find this one for about $10 on eBay. The Isaacar 16mm f1.6 is pretty similar to the Elgeet 12mm, similar image circle size, but the quality drops off a lot towards the edges. It's the smallest of all these lenses, but that's because it has no aperture. It's stuck at f1.6, which makes it really dreamy, soft focus, but very hard to nail the focus. Also because it's so small, it's kind of hard to focus it without getting your fingers in the shot. I have a little step up ring on it to help with that, but it's still a little tough. There's definitely some compromises with this one, but it's absolutely minuscule, and for $10, it's a lot of fun. If you're on the fence about trying C-mount, a $10 lens like this with a $10 adapter, it's hard to say no to as an experiment. But since it's stuck at f1.6, you'll probably want an ND filter for this one. Although it's worth noting I didn't use a filter for any of these clips. The Rise Spray 35mm f1.6 is the first C-mount lens I ever got. Actually, the first interchangeable lens I had at all. It's the longest focal length C-mount lens I use because I'm often using these on crop sensor cameras, so 35 is actually pretty long for me. Because the lenses are fully manual, no stabilization, and they're so small and light, if you go to telephoto, it's really hard to stabilize. This lens in particular has some quirks. The depth of field is a little different in the center than it is at the edges, and when you focus in and out, 
The focus breathing kinda is inconsistent. It's hard to nail focus with this one, and this is a lens where you want to keep your subject in the center of the frame, usually because the focal plane is different towards the edges. So overall, this one's a little finicky for run and gun shooting, but it's actually the one that I ended up using the most as I was shooting this weekend. This is one of the few C-mount lenses I have that actually fully covers an APS-C size sensor, although it's not intended for it so the quality does drop towards the edges. This one can be found on eBay for about $30 and I think it's actually still being produced. These are nicer and newer so the focus ring actually moves quite smoothly. It's definitely an active shooting experience. You have to really be thinking about how you're framing things and, and focusing, but it's a lot of fun and the image looks good. Now, before I show the last three tiny lenses I have, here's the basics of adapting them. This is your image sensor, or your frame of film, whatever's capturing the picture. About 20 millimeters in front of that is your typical mirrorless lens mount. The lens needs to sit the correct distance away from the image sensor to actually focus correctly. Now about 45 millimeters away from the image sensor, you have your typical SLR mounts. Most modern cameras are mirrorless now, Sony E-mount, Canon EF mount, RF mount, Micro Four Thirds. SLR or DSLR mounts are things like EF or vintage lenses like Canon FD or Pentax PK. That's what this old film camera is. These lenses were designed to mount further away so you could fit the viewfinder mirror between the lens and the sensor. Modern mirrorless cameras can mount the lens a lot closer because they don't have a mirror. This means you can't adapt a mirrorless lens to a mirrored camera because the lens wants to be closer to the sensor than the body allows. You can go the other way around using an SLR lens on a mirrorless body by using an adapter that spaces out that flange distance. These C-mount lenses have a flange distance closest to the mirrorless mounts, about 17 millimeters from the sensor. So with a very simple little adapter, they can be mounted onto a mirrorless camera, no problem. The adapters are basically a little lens cap with a screw mount in it so you can stick the C-mount lens in there. With that, the lens is placed the perfect distance from a mirrorless sensor. And just like other mirrorless lenses, they can't mount on an SLR camera because it would need to be too far inside the body. Now, if that's the case, then why does this thing exist? This is a C-mount to EF adapter, allowing you to put a C-mount lens on an SLR camera. Well, here's the secret, there's no rules here and you're allowed to mount a lens at the wrong flange distance. The effect of mounting a lens too far away from the image sensor is that it effectively becomes a macro lens. It can focus a lot closer, although it can no longer focus on things farther away. So you can actually use C-mount lenses on a DSLR, but it'll become more of a niche use case. This opens up a new world of possibilities for mirrorless cameras too, because there's actually more than just C-mount in the world of tiny lenses. D-mount are even smaller film lenses for 8mm movie cameras, and CS is for industrial purposes and security cameras. These have a flange distance of about 12mm, 5mm closer to the sensor than even C-mount. CS and C have the exact same screw mount, so they can use the same adapter, although the CS lens will be at the wrong flange distance. The CS lens I have is basically useless with this adapter. I can't get it to focus any farther than the very edge of the glass. I believe since it's an industrial lens, it's already meant to focus very close, so I basically just made a macro lens even more macro. The D-mount, on the other hand, is actually meant to be used on a movie camera. You can tell these apart pretty easily because they have a smaller screw mount. Using the tiniest lens adapter I've ever seen, you can turn a D-mount lens basically into a CS mount. This one turns out to be actually a pretty decent macro. You can hold an object a couple inches away and still grab it in focus. I use this lens to record all the close-ups of the other lenses that you've seen. So although I haven't had much luck with CS mount, D-mount I do actually use as a macro lens. 
To sum up the technical stuff, C-mount works natively on mirrorless, but not on SLR. You can adapt SLR lenses to mirrorless, and D and CS mount don't work great on anything digital. You can use mirrorless or C-mount lenses on an SLR as a macro, and you can use D-mount or CS mount on mirrorless as a macro. To get back to the lens reviews, I actually attempted to film a piece to camera on the D-mount lens with a little hack to make it not macro. The Tower 38mm f3.2 is a weird one. It's not a C-mount, it's a D-mount, which is why this looks the way it does. So Michael is literally just holding the lens up to the sensor right now, which is why it's all weird looking. Instead of using an existing adapter and mounting it at the wrong distance, I just had Michael hold the lens straight up to the sensor, which I wouldn't recommend. I'd like to try making a DIY adapter for this at some point, but it might not even fit because it has to be so close to the sensor. So for now, it's a niche thing, but kind of fun. The Woolensack 25mm f1.5 is probably the oldest lens in this bunch. It came off of my great-grandfather's 16mm uh, movie camera. I like this lens a lot. I would describe it as the most dreamy looking of all of them. Very soft focus, even when you're in focus. And opening the iris all the way, you can get some very bloomy looking footage. This one fully covers an APS-C sensor, and it probably has the best quality without any crop. It's a very well-made old lens, all metal body, but it is a little stiff on the rings, and it's such a small lens that kind of makes it hard to focus when you're shooting on the go. Another funny quirk about this lens is it's actually not a 25 millimeter, it's branded as a one inch before they standardized all focal lengths to millimeters, but one inch comes out to about 25 millimeters, so it's, it's the same thing. This is the C-mount lens that I probably use the most when I'm shooting in studio, but for run and gun I didn't use it as much, partially because I had another 25 millimeter to test out. The unbranded 25mm f1.4 is pretty similar to the other 25mm, the Wollensack. It's got a similar image circle size, only the very corners are cut off, but this one is much lower quality towards the edges. It's kinda another lens where you have to keep the subject towards the center of the frame to keep him in focus. It's easier to focus than the Wollensack, it's a little smoother of an action moving the focus ring, and it's also a longer throw, so small adjustments will matter less. On this one, the focus throw is backwards from how it is on the other 25mm, so as for muscle memory switching between the lenses, it's a little hard to remember if clockwise is focus in or focus out. In general, I like the image out of the other 25mm more than this one, but I like the ease of use of this one more. Realistically, my actual use case for these tiny lenses has been just shooting for fun. Whenever I'm walking around a city or something and I want a tiny setup I can stash in a coat pocket or something. But for actual production, if you're looking for vintage lenses with a cool dreamy effect, honestly I would recommend the reliability of just any other old film SLR mount like Pentax PK or Canon FD. That being said though, I did actually shoot the intro to a short film on these for my buddy Michael Pappas. We wanted very minimal light, very kind of glowy, dreamy, ethereal looking footage uh, with only one light source. And you know, as of a festival this weekend, that film is an award winner, so uh, you can use $10 lenses and, and get some uh, good enough results for a film festival, apparently. So, as a niche use case, they are genuinely useful, but, you know, other mounts would probably be better if you don't need the tiny form factor. I don't want this to be one of those camera gear videos where it's like, these lenses will instantly make your digital look like film and you have to buy them now or whatever. Realistically, you probably don't need these, but it's a fun thing to mess around with. Side note, thank you for the patience over the last two weeks that I have been not posting videos. The move, the whole studio move ended up being a crazier process than I anticipated and I I pushed myself as hard as I could before uh, burning out heavily, but I'm back now. Weekly videos. 
Next week will be a studio tour of this place uh, before I tore it down. Also, thank you for 20,000 subscribers. That's a crazy number. That's one-fifth of the way to uh, the first plaque. I was really hoping I would uh, cross that number before leaving this studio and... Uh, Tomorrow is the last, this is the last night I'm going to be sleeping here, so uh, it's a real buzzer beater that we hit it right in time. Live streams will be back next week as well, so we're, we're back in the swing of things with all the weekly videos and weekly streams. So thank you for your support, thank you for your patience, and thank you for your time.